Hello, today I'll be showing you how to code a simple oscillating SVG string. So we start with an SVG element and we're going to have a path within it. Now for this uh, path, we're going to set a few simple styles. So we're going to have fill uh, none and we're going to want to have um, a stroke. Um, and this is going to be black just so that we can see stuff. Okay, now we can move on to the JS. We're not going to do anything in terms of structure or uh, styling. And we're going to read out that path. So, document uh, query selector path. And we're going to have a base dimension for the SVG. And this is going to be 2000 because I like large numbers because I can round them up and you know everything still looks nice. Now, a bunch of things we're going to do at the beginning. Um, just get everything set out of the way. First of all, set a viewbox on the SVG. And we're not going to uh, use this again, so we just um, do document query selector SVG uh, set attribute viewbox. Um, actually, just move it on the next line so that uh, we don't get crammed in there. Um, and here I'm going to have minus that base dimension, minus uh, half that uh, base dimension uh, twice. So basically I want an aspect ratio of 2 to 1 and I want the 0, 0 point right in the middle. Um, and here I have join with space. Um, now the next thing that I want to do is set um, uh, the path just give it a d attribute and i'm going to do this uh, with a function a curve uh, and this is going to uh, take uh, the y uh, peak control point whatever y coordinate um, and this is going to be zero initially and then i'm going to have a multiplier uh, let's say it's going to be 1.25 by default and this is going to be, give me an extended value of that uh, dimension so my path is going to be set attribute d uh, so my starting point is going to be uh, minus that extended value and let's just compute that so my extended value is going to be the multiplier times d um, so minus that extended value, zero horizontally, um, and then I have uh, the cubic curve, uh, zero, hor um, zero horizontally, and then I have that y coordinate of the control point, um, and then again I have uh, the extended uh, value for the end point horizontally and zero vertically. Um, and this is what this curve function does, so now I'm just going to call it now. Uh, curve and this uh, should uh, draw a line and it's very thin so what I'm going to do now is um, set attribute um, stroke width um, and let's make this 0 0.03 this should be um, thick enough okay that's good so now that I've done this, um, let me show you what it means with some oscillation. So let's say this is going to be um, half of D. Uh, why isn't that changing the code in any way? Okay, half of D. I don't know what was happening there. So as you can see, that's a curve right there. Okay, so let's go back to the zero. Um, now we're going to have an animation function, but first of all, um, let's see uh, how the oscillation works. Uh, function, oscillation, uh, and here I'm going to have a progress that goes from 0 to 1, and then I'm going to have a number of um, oscillations. So, um, yeah, um, so uh, this k this is going to be 3 by default. So uh, my k goes from 0 to 1. So this is the progress. Now I want to have a damped oscillation. So that means that amplitude goes from uh, its normal value uh, to um, 0. 
So um, a return for the amplitude, I'm going to do something with 1 minus k, because 1 minus k is going to go from 1 to uh, 0. And then I'm going to multiply this with the actual amplitude. Um, the thing is, I don't need to have something, um, a linear decrease. So I can do something like power um, 0.5 here, and this is going to be a square root. But I can change from 0.5 to anything else, and it's not going to be the square root, it's going to be something else. And it can be like a 2, it can be 0.2, it doesn't really matter. Depends on how you want it to uh, decrease. Um, and this is going to be times the sign. This is going to be k times uh, the number um, of times it goes uh, around. Um, and then I'm going to have 2 times pi. Okay, so uh, this is it for the oscillation. Then I'm going to have animation function. And this um, ha uh, takes a current frame, which is initially 0 or whatever, or 1. I think I can just do it 1. And, and it doesn't really matter much. So, um, now the thing that I do here is call this curve function. And uh, for the y coordinate, uh, this takes d times the oscillation. Um, and here I'm going to have a total number of frames. Let's say it's going to be something like 90. And the oscillation is going to be the current frame over the total number of frames. So this is going to be my progress. So yeah, uh, this uh, should give me the curve. So now I can just uh, call animation. Um, and by itself, this doesn't do much. But if I do a request animation frame, and here I increment uh, the current frame, as you can see, it oscillates and then it disappears. Um, and that's because we need to do a few things here. So we're going to have a stop animation function. Um, and we're going to call this when we get to the final frame. So um, if so if we get there, we're going to stop the animation, and then we're going to return. Okay, let's see what we do there. So we're going to have a request ID, which is initially null. Okay, so um, here in the stop animation frame, we're going to have a cancel animation frame. And this uses the request ID. And after that, we set the request ID to null. Okay. So now that we've done this, here we're going to set the request ID. Okay. So now it stops nicely, but we don't want it to start automatically. Um, we want it uh, to start on click, so that's going to be add event listener. Click. Um, So um, this is so um, if we don't have an animation running currently, so a request ID is null, then we can start a new animation, and that's basically it. So clicking just uh, starts another animation, and if we do something in this oscillation function, if we do something like five, we're going to have more of these, as you can see. So if I do something crazy or something like nine, just uh, just just look at this. It goes crazy. Okay, so just uh, bring it back to that. And one more thing I want to do here is just um, do math round so that we have nice round numbers. Okay, so yeah, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have and you want me to be able to put out more stuff in the future, please consider supporting my work in one of the ways explained in the description below. You can do it with a donation. There's a link. And just any, any amount can contribute towards helping me stay afloat. 
or you can just get me something off my Amazon wish list. There are two links there. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done on the web these days, because I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching.